Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. This series of tutorials is taught to introduce you to uh, using WASP as a tool to model discrete aggregations in Grasshopper. I'm gonna go through uh, the basics of using WASP for this task as well as try to show you some of the more hidden features that may not be super intuitive from uh, just looking at the example files. In this second tutorial we are going to be looking at how we can use the same basic commands that we saw in the previous episode and attach to them more complex geometries so that you can very quickly go from a simple aggregation that just describes pretty much the topology of the assembly that we see here to a very complex aggregation by just simply turning a switch. So we're going to see how we can attach this complex geometries to a more simple part as well as how we can then toggle between these different parts and continue working on the complex part and get updates as we work. Let's get started. If you download and open the Rhino file that you can find in the comment box, you will find that uh, there are two parts. One that is the same exact part that we used in the previous tutorial, an hexagonal prism with three connections on the vertical faces. And the second part, which is a very simple cube with two connections. What you can notice also is that on the hexagonal prism, all the connections are oriented in the same way, meaning that connecting just hexagonal prisms will generate a flat aggregation, while instead the cube is the element that takes, in, takes care of transforming and uh, performing rotations since the two connections are not oriented the same way, and so it's going to move the aggregation in 3D space. If we want to start uh, building our uh, aggregation, we are going to have to import both parts. Let's start with the hexagonal prism. As we did in the previous tutorials, we need a geometry component, which we can right click, set one geometry and select the geometry. The second element we need is we need to import three points that define the connection location. To do that, we are going to bring in a point component. We are going to right click on it, set multiple points, and select one, two, and three. And right click to accept. We have to then bring in the same order the connections. And we're going to use a curve component. And we are going to right click, set multiple curves one, two, and three. And lastly, we also want to import the detailed geometry that we have inside the part. And to do that, we're going to bring another geometry component. And we're going to right click, set one geometry, and select our complex geometry. Now that we are done with this, we can select everything and hit our gray light bulb to hide it. OK, we have all the components, and now we can go on and build our first part. We are going to start by going in the parts tab and get a basic part. To build a basic part we are going to have to first specify its name and we are going to do that by creating a panel where we are going to write the name which are going to be X all in caps. We are then going to connect the geometry to the geometry component and then we are going to have to generate the connections. And to generate the connections, we are going to go to the Elements tab and get Connections from Direction. And here we are going to connect again our geometry, our points, and our curves. And lastly, we are going to connect our connection to the connection input. See that our planes are generated here, all looks good. And lastly, we want to store this complex geometry is some, in some way inside the part. And the way to do that is to use an other element of WASP which is called an attribute. So if we go under Elements, we can go and get a WASP attribute. And what a WASP attribute really is, is simply a container that can store pretty much any data, both geometric and non-geometric, and then attach it to a part to be able to carry this along with the rest of the aggregation. To create an attribute, we need to specify all these three inputs. And the first input is how do we want to call this attribute? And let's, for example, call it using a panel uh, detailed. And 
we then have to specify uh, our geometry and we could use that geometry directly however as we wanna as the geometry is relatively complex and we want to have a faster display at the end we are gonna use a mesh vrep component and then we are gonna attribute that that's gonna be the value of our attribute and lastly we are gonna have to specify the last input and the last input is very important the last thing we to specify is whether this attribute is transformable or not what does it mean is that if you think about a geometry this complex geometry that we have here has to be transformed in the same way as the base geometry is transformed in order to be in the right location if you think instead of having an attribute that could store uh, a text value uh, that attribute will instead not need to be transformed because well you don't transform a text a text is just a text so in the case of having a geometric uh, value stored in the attribute we need to place a boolean toggle and set that to true to tell the attribute that it is transformable and hence it has to and hence it has to be transformed across the thing so we go along, we take our attribute and connect it to the attribute tab. And now we have our first part built. Uh, we then have to move on and build our second part. And to do that, we can simply get the whole block we have here and copy paste it with Ctrl C, Ctrl V. We move it below. And then we are gonna go on and update the data. The first thing we are gonna do is we are gonna change the name to cube and press enter. We are going to right click on the geometry, set one geometry and select our cube. Right click on the point, set multiple points and pick one point and then the second point. And then right click on the curve, set multiple curves, one curve and then another curve. And lastly we are going to go to the geometry and say set one geometry and select the detailed geometry. Here we go. So what we have here is two separate parts and what we want to do is build an aggregation where both these parts are used. To do that we are going to go on and the first thing we are going to do is we are going to create a merge component where we are going to connect both parts. You can zoom in and delete the third input. And now from here we are just going to be working in the same exact way as we did in the previous tutorial by simply creating an aggregation component. So we go to aggregation tab and get stochastic aggregation. And so we're going to have to specify some components. The first element we have to specify is the parts we want to aggregate and this case is our parts here. Then we need to specify how many parts we want in our aggregation and let's say for now we want 120. And then we need the rules. Again, we don't want to worry about the rules for now, so we're just going to go on, on the rules tab and get a rules generator. And simply connect our parts to part and then to rules. And lastly, we're going to create a button which we're going to connect to the reset input to create new aggregations. Now our component is calculating and if we want to quickly visualize what we have been creating we can just go on under the parts tab and get a get part geometry component. And there we go. We see that we created this complex aggregation pretty quickly and we can just play around with it and create more or less parts. However it would be good to kind of have a little bit more detail here. So what we want to do here is we want to do pretty much two things. The first thing is we want to be able to uh, separate the hexagonal parts from the cube parts. And that's really good because uh, we can then treat them in a different way. In this case, we are just going to color them differently. But then you might think that you might have different processes applied to them uh, along the way in your code. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, an ability to extract that detailed geometry and switch between the base geometry and the detailed geometry according to what we're doing. Let's go on. Let's delete this part geometry for now. And let's start with the first task. The first task was extracting the, um, 
the geometry and separated them by uh, name. To do that, we can go to the parts, wasp parts tab and go under filter parts by name. We can create this component, connect the parts out to part, and then specify which part we want to extract. Let's start with the first one. So we create a panel and type the first part is called EXA. So we're going to call it EXA. And there we go, we selected the EXA part. And if we want to see them, we can again go to parts, get part geometry. And there we go, here are all our hexagons. And then we can just get this whole block and copy paste it below and change the name to cube. And there we go, here we have our cubes. Great. Now what we can do is we can take these two geometry components and move them slightly up so that they're not in the way. And we're going to go on and do the second step, which was extracting the complex geometry that sits inside this, each of these parts. Let's go on and right click and hide those elements. And to extract the, the detailed geometry, what we have to do is we have to go and access the attribute that is stored in the part and extract its value. We can do that very quickly with a component that is called get attribute by name. We're going to input this. We're going to connect it to our part out. And then we need to specify the ID of our um, attribute we want to get. And if you remember, we said it at the beginning, the ID was detailed. So we create a panel again and we can see detailed. And there you go. Now we see that here what we are doing is we are storing the detail attribute of the hexagonal parts. If we copy paste this below and connect it to the other one, we are extracting the detail attribute of the cube component. Great. Now we have almost everything. The last thing we want to do is we can um, change the, uh, we can create a switch that allows us to toggle very quickly between detail part, base parts uh, while we are working. To do that, we are going to use a grasshopper component that is called stream filter. And this component is very handy, especially when you are creating, uh, let's say, switches in your definition where you can choose different elements according to what you're doing. And the way which it works is that it has a gate input, which will take a value. So in this case, either a zero or a one. And if this value is zero, the output will be whatever comes in zero. And it, while if the input is one, the output is going to be whatever comes in in one. The way we use it is that we can connect our part geometry for our hexagons to zero and our detail part to one. And then we are going to copy paste this and do the same with the cubes. So in zero, we have the base geometry and in one. And now we have to create a gate component that allows us to do the switch. Now we could, of course, create the gate component simply with a slider. So like either a zero or a one. But uh, a better way to do that is to associate to the zero and the one uh, text value in order to be able to uh, understand what we're doing. To do that, we can create a component that is called a value list. And a value list is a very handy component which we can access by double clicking on it. And we enter into this tab in which we can associate to a text value a numerical value. In this case, we are going to say that for our base geometry, we are going to want to output zero because that's where we connected on the stream filter. And for the detail geometry, we're going to want to connect, a, we're going to want to output a one. Now we can connect this to the gate, hide whatever we had before. And now when we switch this element, we are very quickly toggling between base geometry and detail geometry. Great. Let's make it a bit pretty and let's go and get a custom preview and a swatch. 
and connect it to our first element and then copy paste and connect it to the second one and then assign two different colors to our parts great so now we can very quickly switch between the two according to what we want to what we're working on and again we can go of course and just hide whatever we had at the beginning in order to just see what we have and also hide whatever was in Rhino and then we can as always switch to Arctic view where we have this more detailed view and start generating screenshots we can also go and start increasing the number of parts might take a little bit but it should be able to compute without too much effort and the reason why that's possible is because this geometry is not calculated as a collider and so on which would become extremely heavy computationally but it's just stored within a very simple collider and then displayed when you need it great that's it for the tutorial of today i hope you enjoyed it and i hope that based on this tutorial you will be able to create to start creating your base parts to define your aggregation logic and then very quickly model much more complex parts you could also use other softwares other than rhino to model the parts bring them in as meshes and then just toggle very quickly between fast between simple representations and complex representations uh, I hope it was clear for everyone if there's any question or any doubt please let me know in the comment box below uh, if you like the video and you want to keep updated with more videos on WASP and also on other computational uh, tools uh, please subscribe to this video and see you in the next tutorial bye